Welcome to the tutorial series for Fargo Rate's League Management System. I'm Steve Ernst with Fargo Rate, and I'll be your guide as we take a look at score entry using LMS. And this video concentrates on the use of LMS for US APL matches. We'll be doing one for BC APL matches in the near future. In this video, we're going to learn how to print the score sheets for a match, um, actually be able to locate where those matches are in the system to be able to do the printing of the score sheets and score entry. And we're going to walk through kind of what a normal score entry situation looks like. And then we'll get into a few of the more unusual circumstances that can arise. But generally, scorekeeping is very simple in LMS. And by the end of this video, I think that you'll agree. So let's get going. If you've been following along with our previous two uh, videos in this tutorial series, uh, you will recognize the screen that we're on. After the last video, we had modified our division to add some new teams and to add the new schedule. And now we're actually ready to start playing some matches. So I've done a couple things to this division um, since the last video, and I've actually went and added a whole bunch of players to the teams. So the first thing that you're going to do when you're getting ready to play matches is to actually just print the score sheets for the for the teams. And that's super easy to do from the, the division screen here, the main division screen. Over on the right-hand side, you can see the, the upcoming matches table. And there's these print buttons on each row. And by simply clicking that print button, it'll print out the next score sheet for that team and I can see what division it's for. I can scroll down to the second page and I can see it's team D playing the latecomers. And then I can also see the rosters for these teams along with their Fargo ratings. Then I can also see, um, we know we had configured this division to be 500 points per player and three players on this team. So that gives each team a rating limit of 1500 points. And I can see that reflected on the score sheet as well. So I went ahead and printed off the, the scorecard for Team D versus the latecomers. And I filled them out just kind of simulating in a match. And there's what the front sheet looks like. So the home team uh, won two sets to one. And the back sheet looks like this. You can get it all on my screen here at the same time. So while we're looking at this scorecard, I want to talk about a couple things that that are different in the way that USAPL is scored now that Fargo rate is the scoring system that we use. You will notice that there's an, a new column on the score sheet called rating, and that is the, the player's actual Fargo rating, and that can be found on the back side of the the score sheet in the roster area. So I can see Dave Test is a 671, Don Test is a 510, and so on. And the races that get played between, between two players change depending upon the player's Fargo ratings. And the way to determine that is, and this information will all be provided if it hasn't already been to you as operators, um, one of the easiest ways to do it is we have this simple website that you can get to through a phone or a tablet or your computer or whatever, and you simply punch in the Fargo ratings of the two players. So let's, I will put it up here on the video so you can see what, what the URL is, but I also have it right here. So I can punch in this first match and say it's a 671 playing a 611. And I have the choice of a longer race or, or a shorter race, and we'll, we'll do a longer one. So the race will be 99 to 77. And if we look at the score sheet I have here, that's indeed what we have, 99 to 77. And then I did the same thing for the other two races. So now that we have these score sheets filled out, let's actually go enter one. All entry of scores is done from the enter scores location. It's another one of the buttons up in the top section there. We will specify our match date, and we're playing on the 28th. And the particular scorecard that we have right here is between Team D and the latecomers. And we can see there haven't been any scores recorded for them yet. So I can click anywhere on that row, and I will go to that team score sheet. 
So we're going to do the very simplest of cases first, where all of the players are already on the team, meaning there aren't any roster changes or anything like that. There aren't any repeating players. It's just very straightforward. So I'm going to go down my score sheet, and I'm going to just start filling in the information. So Dave Test was the first player, and he had a Fargo rating of 671 and raced to 99. We're going to actually get to the scores in a second. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these. So we had Don, who was a 510, raced to 49. And I'm just going to very quickly going to go through these. So we have all of the players in, and now I'm going to actually just enter the scores. And I can type them in exactly like they are in the score sheet. So that means the same abbreviations apply. So Dave had a break and run in the first rack, then a 3, 14, and so on. So I'm very quickly just going to enter in these scores. You can follow along as I do it. Okay, so we have all of the scores typed in, and I can see just as uh, the players indicated that Team D won the first two sets, and then the latecomers won the last set. And then I can also see something interesting here, that both teams were over the 1,500-point cap. Uh, for example, Team D was over by 182 points, so that's how much they were penalized. The latecomers were over by 174, so that's how much they were penalized. So Team D won this with a, a match total of 223 to 16. But that's interesting, though, because if I look at the, the scorecard, if I can grab the right one, here we go, I see it should have been 405 to 16. But then I can look and see, oh, yeah, I don't know how to add, and this is... 1682 not 1382 so there should have been some penalty of points that applied over here so we're going to go ahead and save it and we can use either of our save buttons here but we save the score sheet i can now see that scores are recorded and if i click on that row again i can view it and i can edit it i can make changes to it if i need to but let's go back to our home screen so we are back on our home screen and we can see that the the data from the match we just entered is starting to fill into the team standings. Um, 74 points per set. Team D has one match win, 223 points. I've played for one week. Now I would like to take just a couple minutes and talk about some of the more unusual things that can happen when you're entering scores. So the first thing is, I'm just going to go grab a match here. It doesn't really matter too much which one it is is what happens if the team has done a last minute add to their roster. So they've added somebody who who just isn't on their roster. Well, that's what this little magnifying glass is for. You click that and here's our old friend, the player screen. And we could search for someone. So if we looked for Xavier Xavier, for example, um, we can add this player to that team, or if it was purely a new player that we knew wasn't in the system, uh, we could create a new player from here as well. So we'll add Xavier, Xavier, and now we will see that he's here. And if we were to go all the way back to our teams, players, and locations, and we were to look at our team, those guys, there he is. Yep, so actually added to the team. Um, right from the scorecard view. The other thing that can happen is, for example, ghost players. So a ghost player is when a team doesn't have enough players and has to repeat um, a set. So for example, if Tim played the first set and then Tom played and then Tim had to play again, there are restrictions in the US APL about um, what... Like, where can the second Tim, if you will, where can the, his second um, set be reported to? 
So it can count towards the team information, but not to his player information. It will still count to his Fargo rating, but not to his player standings in the league. And we handle that for you automatically. The only other thing to discuss is how to score a forfeit. And that's relatively straightforward. I just have a score sheet up here. And all you have to do is go to, let's say that um, that this particular set was going to be a forfeit and George's team was going to win. You just put a WF in for the winning score and then you could put a zero in for the, the corresponding uh, other team's score. And you can see that the... Uh, the latecomers earn 200 points for that forfeit. And one last thing is if you go to the public reports section, and we covered this briefly when we were talking about schedules, and I go to schedule and results, once scores have been entered for a match, this view button turns on. And if I click that, I can now see this is a read-only version. You can't edit this or anything, but I can actually see the outcome of that match. So that is entering scores. I think I've covered everything. As of right now, this is the final video of our tutorial series, but I am positive we'll be adding more in the future. So thanks for bearing with us and learning some more about LMS. This is Steve Ernst from Fargo Rate. Thank you.